Good morning, ladies and gents. Um, I just want to point out to you guys something. Um, we as a non-profit organization get approached every day to provide you with free legal advice. Okay, and psychological support and mediation and so on and so forth. Um... The fact of the matter is, is that the government has institutions set up already to provide you that free service. Okay. Um, you can approach the courts for pro bono assistance um, and so on and so forth. The problem lies, guys, is that there is an issue. There is a direct and present issue. There is a disconnect between what the law says and what actually happens out there. If you do not have the financial wherewithal of war, it is very simple, and I'm sorry to point it out to you. If you do not have the financial wherewithal to go and fight this in court, You've got to use the law and you've got to use the structures that the government gives you to have your rights enshrined. The disconnect comes that, like I said, what is, what it, what's, what is said in the law and what applies are two different things. And you guys experience that on a daily basis. You guys suffer that disconnect. So, in order for an organization like Fathers for Justice, and guess what, guys? There's 60,000 other organizations out there, which fascinates me, with, you know, with one or two oaks involved. And what are they achieving? You know, if those 60,000 oaks just joined Fathers for Justice, and if you don't like the name, and if you don't like me, that's fine, then let's change that. But the point I'm making is, is that there's 60,000 people all trying to do the same thing. If there was one oak organization with 60,000 pe 60, people behind it, all pointing in the same direction that we all agree on. Okay. But I digress. The point I'm making is, is that you can come to Fathers for Justice and you can go to other organizations and they'll help you as best as they can, like I do. And I really put my time and my effort in to assist you guys. And I worked it out the other day that the amount of um, guys that I have actually doing consultations with me per month works out to nine rand and ten cents an hour per month, per hour per month which is less, it's half of the minimum wage. Okay. But I put my time, my effort, my data, my research, my empathy, my sympathy, my legal advice into the whole thing, heart and soul. And I get paid less than minimum wage. But yet you guys... Are quite happy in some instances the there's a there's a certain amount of you that are quite happy to literally go and waste six seven eight nine hundred thousand two million rand over a period of five years but you you won't even pay me for uh, you know an hour's time to help you we want to put a legal department together how do I pay them guys it's got to come out of consultation fees. I can't put a consultation. I can't. I can't put a team together until I can generate sufficient revenue until such time that that sufficient revenue is enough to cover at least one lawyer, one advocate, and one psychologist for the whole of South Africa. The only solution that I can see to change this whole thing is a class action suit. It's the only thing that I can see that requires that we need to put the legal team together. That legal team is going to cost money. 
those people are going to go to court. We've already submitted to the court. We, we've already said, sorry, we've already submitted um, and put the state president, the Department of Justice, the Family Advocates Office, the Department of Social Welfare, etc., 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 on notice over a year ago. And we gave them 90 days a year ago. You know what the government's response was? Okay. So now we are compelled to take the government to court to compel the government to respond. How much is that going to cost? Hmm? Then it needs to, so sometime in the distant future, we will eventually get the, 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 the government to respond. They're not going to respond. We're going to have to go to the Equality Court because by the time we go to the Equality Court, we cannot have the government turning around and saying, oh no, we didn't know about this problem. We need to say, uh, sorry for you. Here is you guys being put on notice. Here's us going through the lower courts, the upper courts, the Supreme Court, approaching the uh, Equality Court, or I don't know, from there it's either Equality Court, then Constitutional Court, or then it's directly to Constitutional Court. Okay. How much is that going to cost? How much time? Is, and, but, and that requires funding, guys. You guys have to crowdfund it. I'm prepared to do the time and, the, and, and put in the time and the effort. But I cannot do it, you know, I, I've, I've also got expenses to pay. And I believe it's very, I believe it's very, in comparison to what you guys pay emotionally, psychologically, legally and financially. I believe what is being asked of you is actually, actually not a lot of money in the greatest scheme of things. Okay. So... The class action suit is there to change the fundamentals at a fundamental entry level. So we're not going to dispute, did you or did you not have a child with this woman? Or did this woman not have a child with you? The minimum basis for entry has got to be 50-50 contact care, guardianship and maintenance. And it must be automatic. We've got to change the best interests of the child. Because right now, the best interest of the child is open to interpretation. Who's got the better lawyer? And more specifically, who's got more money? So the fact that you've got a pit bull of a lawyer that costs you hundreds of thousands of rands a, a second, and he puts forward an argument that is not based in any form of reality, but his is the better argument. So we've got to put there that the best interest of the child is that the child must automatically have daily physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual contact care, guardianship and maintenance with and by both biological parents at all times. Any parent, parents or entity that attempts in part or in whole must, uh, to deny the child its automatic rights, must automatically be imprisoned. Uh, with the specific professional involved, whether it be a lawyer or a psychologist, they must also automatically receive a 25 million rand fine and be dismissed from their particular field of profession. So those are two things that we want that might need to be changed. Summarily removing the child from town, province, uh, to another town, province or, 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 or country. That must... Unless you, as the other parent, give your specific written consent. It should be classified as kidnapping. And that parent should be brought back. To the, the child should be returned to the original home. The, the matrimonial home or the original home that the child was living in. Uh, parental alienation syndrome, guys. The fact that. I mean, like, if you guys don't know that it's child abuse by now, then I'm sorry. And, and the, more specifically, if authorities don't know that it's child abuse, then we're in deep shit. We have to change the fundamental legal law in statute. 
So that when you go and stand in front of the judge or the magistrate and say, I'm being denied contact, I haven't abused my child, there is no proof. Oh, that's the other thing, perjury, false allegations and perjury. I've done enough videos around that. Okay. So that there is none of this to and fro and five years later and 600,000 rand. Does it require some form of intervention? I, I sincerely believe where the couples simply cannot talk to each other, some form of intervention needs to take place. What is that intervention? It must be mediation. Maximum of six weeks if it's just contact care, guardianship and maintenance. If there's a divorce involved, 10 weeks. You should be have an expectation that within 10 weeks you are in and out of the system. Your child, your exes and your rights are automatically enshrined. The only way that you can do that is to have it automatically enshrined in the law anyway. If there is violence, abuse and neglect, well, there needs to, needs, there needs to be a separate pathway. And the a separate pathway is that the lawyers, the advocates and psychologists must have a gun held to their head that they've got to react within nanoseconds to go and take that case to on an urgent basis to the courts and quantifiable, measurable, defined, provable in a court of law evidence must be placed before a judge that is so compelling that says that this parent should have diminished, reduced or have their parental rights and responsibilities taken away partially or in whole. But what are we having now? False allegations in, in false protection orders. Uh, perjury. The, the, the courts, because they are so gender biased, will simply not prosecute a woman for perjury. Not only should the mother that lays those false allegations for perjury should be prosecuted and imprisoned, so must her lawyers, her advocates, her psychologists. And if a lawyer or a magistrate accepts those perjury charges in his or her court, they should also be charged for perjury. Aiding and abetting in perjury. So guys, we've been around the toilet. I've drawn the line in the sand. You are either part of the solution and you are either part of the, 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 the class action suit or not. The fact that you're going to continue to be obliterated until we change the fundamentals. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing that 60,000 other organizations in South Africa can do to assist you. So get behind the class action suit. Okay. The ball is in your court. Join the class action suit. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Like and subscribe on Facebook. Like and subscribe on, on LinkedIn. Um, please uh, put your payments through for the class action suit. Uh, uh, if you want consultations, please contact me directly. Please do not go to di Lee directly. You need to come to me first and I will set up the appointments for you. Have a fantastic day. Love to you all.